Well, good evening. Uh, I signed today pages, page 239, 240 from problems number 6 to 40. Uh, this will may very well be our last assignment for a while. I am, uh, would love to continue the course. Unfortunately, not all students have access to internet at home. Uh, so I will see what we can do with uh, videos on lessons so that we can move along maybe even at a snail's pace uh, during the government shutdown here. But getting started, what we're doing today is we're working with decimals and percents. Um, and so we start off with uh, which number is greater. So we just need to look at the two numbers and see which is greater we can change this into a fraction or change this into a decimal. I usually go with the decimal because if I create a fraction, which would be 4 and 3 tenths, now I have to get the denominators the same and dealing with it with a decimal and a fraction. You'll be able to get the answer, um, but often it can be a little bit tricky to figure things out because this is, that's, if I change that to a 5, I'm going to have a decimal on the top. But you should already know which is greater because I'll show it. So here, what I can do is that 4 is just going to be 4 holes, and I take 2, divide it by 5. 5 doesn't go into 2, decimal point, right? And I add a decimal point to 0. 5 goes into 20 four times, and that gives me a 20. So I have got 4.4. 4.4 is greater than 4.3. So my greater value is 4 and 2 fifths. Now, of course, that's not the only way to do it. I could change, uh, this just came to me, I could change this uh, to a fraction that be 4 and 3 tenths. This is 4 and 2 fifths. I can change the 5 into a 10 by multiplying by 2. That would give me 4 and 4 tenths. 4 and 4 tenths greater than 4 and 3 tenths. Could do it that way also. So either way that you're going, uh, a little bit of math to do on those. Now these problems, all you have to do is write the percent as a decimal or write the decimal as a percent. Um, I'm not going to have you write out a big long model. We got a, you know, a box it has got 100 squares or anything like that in it. We're just going to go ahead and get to the point. So 26%, the percent, the percent always looks larger. They are actually the same exact number. They're just represented differently. The word percent means per, which is divide by 100. So if I take some number, divide it by 100, that's my percent. So what's 26 divided by 100? Decimal point's right there. You just move it over two places. I do need to put a zero out front. So that would equal 0 0.26. Okay? Go on the other way, if I go from a decimal to a percent, what, what, what number would I divide by 100 to get 0 0.63? Well... I have to move that decimal point over, that would be 63%. Because 63 divided by your 100 gives you 0 0.63. Okay, Where you have to be careful is here. Right, Moving the decimal points here, here, moving decimal points here. So let's actually look at this one right here. Let's look at number 19. 49.92, and then that's repeating. So, if I move the decimal point over two places, boom, boom, I've got to put a zero out front. I get 0 0.4992 repeating. The 49 is not going to be repeating. Don't put that repeating bar over the wrong thing. So, it does get a little bit trickier when we're dealing with more digits. So that's probably the trickiest one that I'm looking at. Remember, over 100%, your answer is going to be over 1. Right? It's going to be greater than 1 because you have more than one hole. So let's take a look at the next section here. 
your friend writes 4.8 represent percent as a decimal. Is your friend correct? Okay, so looking at this, and remember, how many places do you move the decimal point? Okay, which one always looks larger, a percent or a decimal? Those are key things to remember. Because the decimal or the percent, you literally are dividing it by 100 to get the decimal. All right, so here. Now we're writing fractions as a decimal and or as a percent. So there's a couple of tricks here. Um, for example, uh, write fraction as a decimal and a percent. You have to do both. Okay, well, you can't go to a percent real quickly or when it's, if it's a hundred. So there are a couple of these, this one, this one, this one, this one's got, this one I'm going to be real careful with. But you can change these to hundreds by multiplying top and bottom. That would give you a percent, right? Hundred by multiplying by 25, because 4 times 25 is 100. So if I multiply by 25, this would give me an equal proportion with 100. So I'd multiply the top by 25, and that would give you 75 over 100. So that's 75%. Move the decimal point over 2, and you get 0 0.75. Okay? So you can do that. Otherwise, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be dividing this, and you're looking for a repeating pattern. So here... We've got 3 divided by 11. 11 does not go on to 3. It does go on to 30 twice. That gives you a 22. Subtract. You get an 8. Add a 0. So we have uh, 11 goes into 8 7 times. That's 77. Subtract. You get a 3. Add a 0. And that goes into it twice. And then here's our pattern. Oh, sorry. Twice is 22. Subtract, get an 8. Now here's my pattern. I'm stuck. 0 0.272727. That's my repeating pattern. So as decimal, I write 0 0.27 repetent. Now if I write this as a percent, I'm moving that decimal point over two places. That gives me a 27. The repeating bar is not going over the 27. So I'm just going to write the next two digits and put a repeating bar over that and then my percentage sign. Okay. Let's take a look at 31 because 31, that's a very small number. That's a very small number indeed. So let's do 1 divided by 750. 750 doesn't go into 1. It doesn't go into 10. So I put another 0. Doesn't go into 100. I put another zero. Oh, there's my decimal point. I forgot it. And so it does go into 1,000. So how many times it goes into 1,000 is 1. So 1 times 750. And I'm subtract, subtract that. That's 250. Add a zero. Drop it. All right. 750 into 2,500. So 75 into 250. 1, 2, 3 times. 4 times. 1, 2. No, it won't go 4. It's going to go 3. All right, so 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 5 is 15. Carry the 1. 21, 22. Subtract 0. Borrow 4, 10, 5, 2. 250. I'm right back where I started. So it's going to go 3 times. Right? Add a 0, I'll go 3 times, and I get 2, 2, 5, 0. So what I have for my decimal is I have this 3 repeating at the end. So we got 0 0.0013 repeating. There's my decimal. Now, change this to a percent by moving this over two places. So you get 0 0.13 repeating percent. Do not forget the percent sign, please. It's very important because it's telling you I have to take this number and divide by 100. Okay? So these are going to be trickier. When we're dividing by 9s, 11s, uh, 6s, I know I probably had the wrong thing, that's a lot of repeating material. 8 is going to terminate, 3 is going to repeat. So those, those things are going to be repeating decimals, and you'll see answers over and over and over uh, where you have repeats. But just handle that in that manner.
All right, let's take a look at this page. Order from least to greatest. So let's see, 33 should be in books, so let's look at this one. So I want to change fractions, decimals, percents. If I go with fractions, I got to get the same denominator as a nine, which is going to be difficult. So I'm thinking I may go to a percent or a decimal. Okay, so I'm just going to flat out go to decimals. So move decimal point over two. This is give me 0 0.21. I have 0 0.21 repetent. This one's larger because there's a one next. This one only has a zero. And then now I got to figure out these two. So two divided by nine. Two divided by nine. Nine does not go into two. Zero. Put a decimal point. Nine goes into twenty twice. Eighteen. Subtract. Two. Decimal point. Nine goes into twenty. I said eighteen twice. Twenty twice is eighteen. And two. But my two is repeating. So that two two is going to be greater than two one. So 0 0.2 repeating because that's two 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 two. All right. Now, I got to do 11 divided by 50. 11 divided by 50. 50 doesn't go into 11. Decimal point, add a zero. Into 110, it goes twice. That's 100. Subtract, and I get 10, add a zero. 100 twice. But this one terminates. This one terminates. This is 0 0.22. This one is 0 0.222. So, this is going to fit right in between these. So let's see. I'm going to, my smallest number is 21%. So I have to list these from least to greatest. I'm trying to make some little bit of room where I can do this. And I'm going to do it in a different color. So it says from least to greatest. So I have 21%. That's my smallest number. My next smallest number was this one, 0 0.21 repertent. My next smallest number is 0 0.22. It cancels, so that's 11 fiftieths. And my next smallest number, or my largest number, is 2 ninths. So I do want to list these in order of the original numbers. Okay? Show your work. Let me see what you're doing. But do list them with the original numbers so we can see what's going on here. Okay. Tell which letter is shown on the number line. All right. So... The decimal should be easy enough. Number 38, I'm thinking that should be easy enough because move decimal point over twice. So let's do 5, 6. That's the one that I'm going to do. Oh, wait. Those are in the back of the book. All right, 5, 6. So 5 divided by 6. I know I'm going to get something that repeats. 0, decimal point. 6 into 50, 8 times. That's 48. Subtract. Add a 0. That goes net three times. 18. Subtract two. There I am. I'm already repeating. So 5, 6 equals 0 0.83 repetent. Okay. So 0 0.80, 0 0.81, 0 0.82, 0 0.83 exactly, 0 0.83 repetent. Yeah, it looks like the letter D. The letter D represents number 37. Okay, let's take a look at 40. The table shows the portion of gold medals that were won by the United States in five Summer Olympic Games. And what year did the United States win the least portion of gold medals, the greatest portion of gold medals? Justify your answer because they give this in all different terms. So I do want to change these into something constant. Um, and again... I'm going to go with a flat-out decimal. You can go with a percentage. That's just fine. You can also go with fractions. But I'm telling you, fractions are going to be difficult because in order to compare them, you need a common denominator. And with this being 301, difficult. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to a decimal. And that's going to be 0 0.123. Just the 3 is repeating. This one is already done, 0 0.12 repeating. So this one 
goes one, two, three. This one goes one, two, one, two. So this one is small. Okay, so right now that's my largest, that's my smallest. Now I have to do 36 divided by 301. I probably need to go back three, maybe four decimal points. 36 divided by 301. So zero decimal point. Add a zero. 301 into 360. One time. 301. I get 59. Add a zero and drop it. So now I go 301 into 590. It's still one time. 301. 9, 8. I did not borrow. 2, 9, 8. Add a zero. 301 into 209. Now I'm looking at my first digit is 3. My first two digits is 28. So I'm thinking 9 times because it's not going to be 10. It may be close to 10, but it's not going to be 10. So I'm going to go with 9 times. 9 times 1, 9. 9 times 0, 0. 9 times 3, 27. Subtract. That becomes an 8. Borrow 10, 1, 8, 1. 181. So I'm good. Add a 0. So 3 into 18, 6 times. And I'm going back 4 digits just so I don't have to go back and redo this work. I'm pretty sure 4 digits is going to be enough. Uh, so 6, 6 times 1 is 6, 0, 18. Oops, oh yeah, there we go, 4 left over. So I just barely made it. So it keeps going on and on, but right now I know that this one is 0 0.1196, that, 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 that keeps going on. 1, 2, 1, 2. Right now this is my lowest one. That's my lowest one. All right, let's do the next one here. 23 divided by 150. 150 divided into 23, ooh, not 27, 23. All right, zero, decimal point, 230, one time, subtract. Borrow, 13 minus 5 is 8. Add a 0, drop it. Okay, now, 150 times 150 is 300. 300 times 3 is 900, so that's too big. So, uh, 6, I'm going to go 5. 5 times 0, 0. 5 times 5, 25. 2. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 2 is 7. 750. 500. Zero, zero. 1.5. Ooh. 1.5. Now, right now, it's bigger than all three of these. However, I'm probably going to go back at least four digits because I don't know what this one's going to be yet. So, 500. Uh, looks like times three. Would that do it? 30? Yes. I'm going to try it times three now. Let's see. go with a different color so I can see what's going on. 3 times 0 is 0. 3 times 5 is 15. Carry the 1. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 1 is 4. Oh, and look at that. I got 50 again and add a 0. So I got a repeating 3 here. All right, so this one right here. What's going on here? Okay, here we go. This one right here is 0 0.153 repeating. They're at right now is my largest, my largest year. All right, now I'm going to do the last year. I know this is a lot of long math. I've got 307 divided into 46. Zero, point, point, add a zero. One time, all of them started like that. 307. Subtract 3, 5, I didn't borrow, 153. Okay, add a zero, drop it. All right, 3 goes into 15 five times. But 5 times 7 is 35. And I only have 30. So I'm thinking 5 is going to be too high. I'm going to have to go smaller. I'm going to go for 4. Okay, 4 times 7 is 28. 2, oh, 2 just drops. Okay, so that's minus 2. 
4 times 3 is 12. All right, so 2, 0, 302. That's less than 307. Now, I know this is going to keep going. I can add a 0 and get the next digit, but do I need to? And my answer is no, I don't. This is a 1.4. 0 0.14, 0 0.12, that's larger. 0 0.11, that's larger. 0 0.12, that's larger. 0 0.15, that's smaller. So now I've got it. I've got all of mine written out as a decimal so I can compare these. So let's go back to the problem and actually read what it says. The problem says, in what year did the United States win the least portion of gold medals? The greatest portion, justify your answer. Justifying your answer, you have your math on your paper. You didn't erase it. You've got all these listed out. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to see that long division on your paper. I'm not going to give you full credit. Okay? Show it. All right. So, which was the least? All right. My least, 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 5, 1, 4, 1, 1. The least year. So, least medals in 2004 with 0 0.1196. We didn't find the repeating yet. It may be that 6, but we don't have to find the repeating. We just have to know that that's the least. All right. Then it says which one was the greatest. Greatest medals in that one. It is 1 1.5, 1 1.4, 1 1.2, 1 1.1, 1 1.2. 2012. And that's with 0 0.153 repertin. And we did find the repeating there. Okay? So that's what you want to do. I could have stopped at three digits because I'd need at least three to compare to these two. But I went on because I wasn't sure what I was going to see in the future. And this last one, I only did two because there's no point in going any further. I already know it's not the top one. It's not the bottom one. Not sure where that cut off. Last time I looked down, it was working. But um, I need to write down which one was greatest, which one was least. So I went through. My least number of metals was in 2004 here because that had 0 0.11. 1, 2, 1, 2. And then my most was 2012, 0.15. That's a 1, 4. Everything else is less than that. So I wrote down my answers and show your work. Okay? Um, that was, I think that's number 40. So I am done. Um, I may be putting out stuff on Google Classroom. So watch Google Classroom, uh, and I will send out uh, YouTube videos, but I'll put it on Google Classroom if there's an assignment. You, I'm going to tell students, take your math books home with you today. However, if you don't want to and you can get on big math ideas, you can look at your math book on big math ideas. Okay, good luck with that. Um, I hope to see you guys sooner rather than later. Bye-bye.